Well, Halloween has officially come and gone. Even though my favorite holiday is now over and you're once again considered weird for pretending to be abducted by an alien in public, there's at least one part of the Halloween season that we can keep on enjoying all year round. And that's Roblox Horror Games. I think what a lot of people think of Roblox Horror, they tend to think back to old myths like Mugen, 1x1x1x1, one by one by one by one, Guest 666, and John Doe, but what a lot of people don't realize is just how far Roblox's horror genre has really come since then. It's 2022. The capabilities of the Roblox Studio engine are better than ever before, and the skill set of the average developer grows wider by the day. There are tons of beautiful and unique horror games out there now that do so much more than we would have ever thought possible in the days of John Doe. Gone are the days of getting spooked by large random cave systems with blocky blood on the walls, and Roblox's horror genre is so diverse now that it's kind of split into several subgenres. Instead of just horror, we now have survival horror, adventure horror, horror showcases, horror mystery solving games, and pastries bakery cafe to name just a few. But there's another horror game subgenre that was pretty prevalent on Roblox not too long ago. One that seemed to captivate almost every Robloxian out there in fact, despite its games being so unapologetically bad. One that arguably shaped the evolution of the Roblox horror game landscape as we know it today, despite being utter garbage looking back on it. This is the cringy Roblox horror story game. Now, to be clear, when I refer to these games as games, I mean that in the most trivial sense of the word, because the very first red flag we should have seen with this genre is that its games don't really have any gameplay at all. Upon spawning into one of these games, you're met with various doorways to travel through, each with its own unique name denoting the story that lies behind it. Stories are comprised of several scenes made up of usually stationary objects and characters acting out part of the story, and viewing each scene in sequential order comprises a story. If you've ever had one of those miniature books with a picture on each page and you're meant to flip through the pages rapidly to create something similar to an animation, it's basically that, except a lot more drawn out. And uh, that's it. There is literally nothing else to do in these games, I kid you not. Some of these games offer things like a campfire to tell your own horror stories around, but aside from that and maybe resetting your character a bunch of times to see if you'll respawn as a ghost, there's no more fun to be had. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm, say, watching a movie, the movie's story is only half of what I'm paying attention to. A good piece of visual media needs both a good story and good visuals. So I wouldn't exactly mind if the gameplay was skimped out on a little bit if it meant the game's design would be that much more interesting. I'm a showcase fan. I could definitely appreciate an awesome design in place of awesome gameplay. These games had neither. Take Scary Stories, for example, a game that I actually have a lot of nostalgia for. I used to play it pretty frequently around 2018, which is generally considered the peak of this genre. And playing it again recently made me realize just how rose-colored my nostalgia goggles apparently were. The walls were paper thin in spots, allowing me to traverse to basically anywhere in the map I wanted using E slash dance 2 clipping. Free model usage was rampant, most of the story scenes took place in barren colored voids, most of the teleporters were broken, making half the map inaccessible through legitimate means, and there were several spots where bricks didn't even connect or underwent severe clipping. It was honestly a train wreck, I'm surprised I didn't get prompted to buy a fake admin t-shirt every 10 seconds. There were better games than this one of course, but at the end of the day, pretty much all of them still had severe flaws. One pretty well built game I found tried to use audio cues to heighten the mood, but one of the cues was apparently a stock sound that they never paid for. Jungle. There was another game that was actually even better built, but the English they were using for character dialogue was so bad that I literally could not understand one of their stories because of it. If one of you can decipher this sentence, please let me know. Yet another once popular game I found was literally just a grass terrain field with stories on one side and free model abandoned buildings that I couldn't get into on the other. Which reminds me, despite the obscene levels of free model usage in most of these games, not a lot of the developers apparently decided to take a free model of a professional looking dialogue system. Because for the most part, the characters in these stories could only talk one sentence per scene using Roblox Studio's default humanoid naming system. Essentially what this means is that they took the character that was speaking, renamed its username in Roblox Studio to the line it was saying, and called it a day. It's an incredibly unreliable line of text that clips in and out of view depending on the angle you look at it from, and it's a shame that it hasn't been updated in all the time it's been implemented on Roblox because it would help make these games, you know, actually readable. At this point, it's probably pretty obvious that most of these games developers were not professional 
professionals by any means. In fact, after looking at a lot of their profiles, I have a sneaking suspicion that a lot of them were literal children. Cute Megan, the developer behind that abandoned building place, is dressed like a Gotcha Life character, and I'm pretty sure Joshi11223344455, the name of the mastermind behind Scary Stories, is the username that autofills when you click under 13 on the Roblox signup page. And so that makes it pretty clear why these games were so unprofessional and rudimentary. The devs behind them simply didn't have the knowledge and experience to do anything else. They didn't know how to animate characters, they didn't know how to implement professional looking dialogue, they didn't know how to build impressive looking designs of their own, often having to resort to free model usage, they simply worked with what they had. And unfortunately, that didn't really allow for them to be anything other than cringe by today's standards. But I feel like I still haven't quite impressed upon you the exact level to which these games were cringe. I can talk about poor design quality, rushed development, corner cutting, and much more until I'm blue in the face. But in my opinion, in order to really understand the full scope of cringy Roblox horror story games, you really have to experience one for yourself. And I think I know of the perfect one. That's right. I made one of these. Yes, I too was a cringy horror story game developer years ago. In fact, mine was made slightly after the peak of this genre in 2019, also known as the last good year to ever happen. You see, back in 2019, I was dead set on becoming a famous Roblox game developer. Why? Because famous devs have cool limiteds, and I wanted them too. Yeah, my reasoning for things was pretty shallow back then. Now, fun fact about me, I actually went to a special magnet high school that was supposed to teach you all about information technology, which included video game making. But what I didn't know when I enrolled there was that the education to be received there was, for lack of a better word, dog water. In the entirety of my four years at that school, I only ever learned the basic principles of coding, and the building of maps and 3D models was something that was practically never touched on. As a result, even though I was in my sophomore year at an IT-dedicated high school, there was a pretty significant problem with my aspiration to be a famous game developer, which was that I didn't know how to develop any games. So in order to make that dream a reality, the game I made would have to have little to no coding, rely pretty heavily on free models made by people better at building than me, and yet still seem professional and have the potential to go viral. And there was only one genre of game that I could think of that fit all of those criteria and that I knew I wanted to make. A horror story game. To increase my game's chances of going viral, I decided to give it a theme. It would be a haunted library with books containing portals to the stories they contain. There would be a side quest, a hangout area for people to tell their own stories, monster characters throughout with witty dialogue, aisles and aisles of creepy books and artifacts, and most importantly, some banger horror stories. Unfortunately, I don't really remember what those stories were because I haven't seen them in about three years. Remember, this game relied heavily on free models, and back in 2019, the free model market was a lot more wild and unpoliced than it is now. You kids really have it too easy. Models featuring viruses, unwanted game-breaking elements, and lag-inducing properties galore were staples of Roblox's model library. Some models would sneakily insert malicious scripts into hard-to-find places without you knowing. Some would try to teleport players of your game to a different one, and some would simply try to troll you by making your game unplayable. And I unfortunately, downloaded one of those. If my memory serves me right, after downloading this model, whenever I would play the game, it would play fine for about a minute. Then the screen would slowly begin to fade to gray. After a few seconds, it would turn completely gray, and text would appear on screen saying, hacked by so-and-so, and it would stay there permanently. I don't remember who the quote-unquote hacker was, but I do remember that they were kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for this game. I had already had a very hard time developing this game before this problem arose. Because I was a noob at deving, I hadn't bothered to organize my models and parts at all when I first started, so everything was pretty much just jumbled all over the place, and changing any one part of the game was becoming more and more of a challenge. Also, because it had so many needlessly part and script-heavy free models, the game was now laggy as hell. It would take 14 ticks of the waiting for an available server counter to generate a new server, and even at minimum graphics, the lag was apparent. I really wanted to finish this game, but it was getting harder and harder to work on by the day, and once this hacker incident happened, I realized that the game was far too laggy, buggy, and unplayable at this point to be enjoyable in any capacity. So I had no choice but to abandon it until now. This past week, I was in a nostalgic mood, and I decided to revisit Nightmare Library. Upon playtesting, I found that the hacker message was just gone for some reason, and because the Roblox game client has improved overall, the game is actually now playable with minimal lag. And that's actually how I got the idea to do this very video. I just hit a pretty cool milestone of 500 subs, thanks so much for that by the way, I literally can't thank you enough, and it was just the spooky season, so what better way to celebrate my Halloween 500 subs milestone than to take a look back at the spookiest part of my Roblox career. To that end, I haven't gone through any 
any of the stories yet, because I want both you and I to experience them essentially for the first time together. I have vague memories of thinking that the stories were really good back when I was making them, so let's find out if I really made a spine-tingling, bone-shaking, revolutionarily spooky game, or if I too was a participant in the genre of cringy Roblox horror stories. Alright, after spending a very spooky five minutes trying to figure out how to map this place out, I've come to find that there are six stories here, and this is the least scary one and the shortest. So, let's start slow and ramp it up. First one is called Addiction. Let's hope it's not offensive. These are all too expensive. Don't you have anything cheaper? Hmm, we do actually have one. Somebody dropped it off early this morning. Whoa, how much is that? It's free. Just one condition. You have to use it every day. Okay, wait, no, no. You can't, buddy, you can't give this away for free. It looks like it costs it. What? What is this? Alienware? It's got to be at least a thousand dollars. You're you're gonna get fired. You're 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 losing major business. Done. Thank you so much. Anytime. Gotta love Microsoft's placement with uh, no price tags whatsoever. That's great. That's great. Ooh, we got a hacker man. Sir, the prototype has been sold. Excellent. Now the experiment can begin. Day one. The subject is already displaying significant attachment to the prototype. Early signs of addiction visible. Time spent online three hours. <laughs> You gotta up your numbers, buddy. I spend like 10 hours a day online. I'm sad. Wow, this is such a good PC. You can tell it's good because it loads up the start menu really fast. Day two, subject surveillance shows that subject is skipping certain activities such as chores and socialization to spend time online. You and me both, buddy. Time spent online, six hours. This is amazing. I'm playing as a guest in 2019. I didn't know this was possible. Day three, subject's food and water levels are at minimum. Subject is now spending almost every waking hour using the prototype. Time spent online, nine hours. So much game. I mean, yeah, that's kind of me whenever I play a game. Ooh, look, he's evolved to a different kind of guest from like uh, 2010 or something. The, the march of time is inevitable, I guess. Day four. Subject is now sleeping later and failing to take any breaks from the prototype, even to use the restroom or eat. The desired links are beginning to form in subject's brain. Time spent online, 12 hours. He's abandoned Roblox entirely. He's playing Fortnite now. That's That's a little bit blasphemous, don't you think? Drools. Okay, yeah, that's just every gamer. Day five. Subjects ties to society have been severed. Fake obituary has circulated. The process is nearly complete. Time spent online 24 hours. No one has entered his house at all to check to make sure he's actually dead. They just circulated the obituary. Uh, they, they sold all his stuff. He's still in there. They just thought it was like a statue in, in the seat. And he's just saying a bunch of dots. I guess he knows Morse code, which is pretty cool. It has begun. <laughs> What the heck is this place? Uh, you are in my soul. Get it? Cause my, my soul is black. It's dark. I got a twisted mind. Get it? Ha ha ha. Experiment complete. Subject is now in cyberspace. Return to physical world will commence shortly. Uh oh, we got some danger going on. Okay, this is the scary part, guys. Me whenever I run Roblox on maximum graphics. Prototype unresponsive. Return to physical world failed. Experiment terminated. Uh oh, we're self destructing now. I think we already did though, so, um. Uh... Not sure why we're doing that. And now we're getting hunted by the creepy cyber guy. Ooh. That wasn't really scary. It was just kind of sad to see uh, someone go through the chronically online gamer pipeline that inevitably happens every time someone buys a PC with lights on it like that. But oh well, what can you do? It was, it was bound to happen. All right, next up is the pencil. This has a medium length and a low scare level. So it's supposed to be about as scary as addiction. Let's see if it can measure up and somehow manage to be scarier. Hey man, do you have a pencil? Nope, but there's one on the floor. Oh, god damn. Okay, you are a bad friend right off the bat. I don't really like you that much. I kind of hope you die. Also, you're not wearing any pants, which is public indecency, so I have half a mind to call the police on you right now. Wow, you're such a great friend. Rolls eyes. Thanks. You know, you've been drawing a lot lately. Maybe you should draw a poster for that poster right there because uh, the school clearly forgot to put one in there. Yeah, it's something my dad and I like to do together. Oh, sorry for mentioning it. It's cool. Now let's get to work. Okay, what is he working on? He doesn't have anything in front of him. What do you mean, let's get to work? I, I think he 
he's going to be the only one that's working. Maybe he's maybe he's his professional cheerleader. He's getting paid like 15 bucks an hour to uh, to cheer him on. Uh, like, yay, draw for your dead dad. Like, that's probably it. There, finished. Oh, cool. It's your dad. Hey, guys, can I use that pencil? This girl takes Bluetooth to a whole new level. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Now I can finish drawing monsters. Another day alone. Okay, hang on a minute. Is this kid implying that he lives alone maybe he's doing commissions online for his drawing like for 15 bucks you get a picture of my dad that's that's probably it oh and it suddenly turns to almost nighttime and his dad is there with a gucci tie and no sleeves awesome so i just open up the door and boom He's there. Well, they never found his body, did they? Maybe he just came back? Yeah, but what are the odds he comes back on the day I draw him? It's like I drew him to life. If that's true, Gwen's in trouble. He gave the pencil to her, and you've seen what she does. Yeah, and I'm still not wearing any pants. Yeah, I guess I am being silly. Anyway, see you around. And done. I'm still at school at night for some reason. I'm not gonna lie. That kind of made me flinch with the sound combined with the image. That kind of hit. And she is being attacked by something that looks nothing like the monster that she just drew. Awesome. All right. So yeah, um, if you didn't hear before, that actually kind of scared me because of the jump scare at the end. I'm kind of susceptible to jump scares. So I'm surprised. I, I thought I would not get scared by any of these, but here I am getting scared by the second one that does not bode well for my fate for the rest of these stories. He didn't listen. Scare level medium length short. Okay. So this is promising to be even scared scarier than the pencil. If that's the case, I'm probably going to pee my pants, but let's get started. I can't believe I was able to make friends so fast at this school. See? I told you you'd fit right in. Everyone is wearing headphones or blowing bubblegum and not doing their experiment, and I think they're probably going to fail whatever class they're doing right now. So I'm probably going to cut a lot of this out, but it is pretty hard for me to read this kid's dialogue because for some reason the dialogue shows up only half the time. You have to turn your head to a really specific angle to see it, which is pretty annoying, and I don't really like it. So, you guys want to watch a movie later? Ooh, sorry. We actually have to stay after school. For what? Uh, mandolin club? Yes. Yes, that. We have to go play our mandolins. Uh, never mind that dialogue is, uh, is supposed to be read from left to right, which makes it look like he just said out of nowhere, we have to go play our mandolins. Bring! Whoops, there's the bell. Gotta go uh, polish our mandolins. Okay, and we got another case of public indecency on our hands. Please put on some pants. Seriously. David, seriously, listen to me. Don't follow us. I've got to go put on some pants first. Don't follow you. Right. We appear to be in some sort of basement dungeon, or maybe it's just a hot topic. Whoa, what is this place? Attention! It seems a new student, David Hopper, ooh lord, has unwittingly joined our group. Tony, please enter David's name into the drawing and then bring out the box. Yes, sir. <sighs> the box has spoken. David, step forward. Never mind that your name does not appear to be written anywhere on this paper. I just, it's just, it's spoken. It spoke to me telepathically. Me? Oh, David, I wish you would listen. What are you doing? He should have listened. And yeah, that's why you listen, instead of having headphones on, like two out of the four characters here do. So yeah, that might have been a little counterintuitive. Okay, that was not as scary as the pencil one, honestly, but there was this ominous ticking noise in the background. I don't know if you guys picked up on that. It was probably from that guy's clock headphones. I honestly don't know how he listens to any music with them when that ticking noise is in his ears all the time, but you know, to each his own. Okay, the Ginny. We now have length medium, scare level medium. So this is supposed to be about as scary as he didn't listen. Uh, love me a good Ginny story, love me a good Aladdin. So let's see what the Ginny is all about. Hello, young man. What can I do for you today? I need a ring for my GF, but everywhere else is too expensive. Maybe you should have spent less money on your Fendi clothing if you were so broke. And maybe you could have also afforded pants. You're in luck. We have some very cheap rings in the back. I'll go get them. Really? Thank you. Wait, lady, you dropped something. Uh, yeah, you dropped this extremely flat lamp. That's actually the teapot mesh just kind of squooshed down. You dropped that. What the heck is this thing? Ah! Ah, oh, finally free. What? What are you? I am a humble chief. For setting me free, I grant you three wishes. Well, I'm proposing to my GF tonight. For my first wish, I wanted to say yes. Yeah, you know it's a serious horror novel when the guy says GF. It is dumb. Breaking news! A local woman has been found dead inside her home. Wait! 
What have you done? I fulfilled your wish. Keep watching. According to her home security system, her last word was yes. But I never asked you to kill her. Her destiny was to die at this time. I just made her say the word yes like you wish. I think this guy should get the Mona Lisa over here as compensation. All right, then for my next wish, I want you to bring her back to life. Never mind that I should probably be wishing for pants. If you're sure, it is done. Christine, I asked you to bring her back to life. <laughs> Help me. <clears throat> she is alive, but not for long. You never asked me to change her bodily state. That, that's not right. No, it kind of is. You did never ask him to change her bodily state. I'm kind of on the genie side now. You're, you're, you're acting kind of dumb. And she's dead. Sorry. When you can grant wishes, you can make the rules. Maybe your wish, genie, should be to not be comprised of several stretched, pixelated JPEG files and two badly smooshed together wedges. <laughs> that's it. For my final wish, I want to be able to grant my own wishes. Isn't that against the rules in like every genie movie ever? Ah, it is done. Maybe he did wish for no more JPEGs. Wait, wait, what's happening? You, my friend, are being engulfed by what we call the ghosts of SpongeBob. Ugh, what happened? Careful what you wish for. Well, at least he still gets to keep his drip and he doesn't need to buy any more pants. Okay, I actually kind of remember this one, Sarah. I remember this being a pretty good one. I'm, I'm kind of excited for this one. It is scare level high and length long. So yeah, get, get ready for this one. Hey, Sarah. So are you coming on the camping trip with us or not? Um, I'd rather not. Are you sure? I still have this hanging over your head. Remember? Yeah, I have this picture on my phone of two totally different people than you, unless she dyed her hair blonde at some point, but I don't think she did. This is an imposter. She she has she has nothing on her. Sarah, don't don't believe her lies. Later on. Oh my god. This I uh, we're already up to the scary stuff. This fire is raging. I think they're all going to die. Sarah, go grab some firewood. Can one of you guys do that? I've already done everything else. Just go grab some firewood and make it quick. Everyone on this trip has to pay their dues. Well, I'm only on this trip because you blackmailed me with that pick. That pick that didn't feature me at all in any way and that I could have just ignored. Why why did I come on this stupid trip anyway? Those girls are so mean and- <laughs> Footsteps. Right? Assuming that this is this girl's tent. Largest tent in the world. I have no idea how she can afford something this big. Brittany, is that you? More footsteps. Danielle. Sarah. Found some firewood. Oh, hey kitty. Ew, you got blood all over your shirt. Uh, no, she does not just have blood. She has a massive gaping hole in her chest. I think you need to take her to the hospital or pronounce her dead on the scene. Just a scratch. Can you stoke the fire? Yeah, I'll take care of it. You go get yourself cleaned up. Okay. By the way, how did you- Whoa! The next day. <sighs> God, is it morning already? I didn't even hear Sarah come back. Hey guys, did you- um, it's too late. I think they found some firewood. <laughs> okay, that explains how they were able to afford those giant ass tents. She's apparently got Ferrari money or something. Maybe she's a YouTuber. <laughs> driving, driving, driving. That did not scare me as much as the other one did, but uh, wow, that's a, <laughs> that's a remarkably scuffed image. Ooh, I'm Sarah! <laughs> And she drives off the bridge into the water. Damn, I'd, I'd love to be the person who's scavenging the river and comes across that. You can sell that for hella parts. Too late for apologies. Okay, that was not as good as I remember it. Uh, it was basically just a classic mean girl bully story, kind of like Roblox bullies, except with scary elements. Uh, I can only hope that the final story is less bad. This is The Horseman. Scare level high length long. Judging by the fact that it has horsemen in the title, I'm guessing it's going to be about a Robloxian who spends 30k Robux from his mom's credit card on headless horsemen, and then his family is forced to go on the streets and dies of starvation. That's just my prediction. Let's see if I'm right. Hey man, are you ready to go? Yep. Wait, before we go, what is that costume? It makes mine look like garbage. Like it? It's the headless horseman, see? Oh cool. Thanks. Now let's go. Later on. Well, here we are, the 10th annual graveyard party. Yeah, and you're sure we won't get in trouble? Bro, relax. Every parent in town thinks we're all out trick-or-treating right now. Okay, then let's head on in. Party's great so far, isn't it? Yeah, I'm having an awesome time. Hey, Zach, we brought some fireworks. You want to help us shoot them off? Yeah, sure. 
Jake, you want to come? No, thanks. That sounds kind of dangerous. Plus, I'd rather not go with two furries and a guy with no pants. That's, uh, that seems kind of like a situation waiting to happen. Okay, I'll be back in a few minutes. I'll be here later on. Hey, Jake, you look a little lonely. Why is everyone here a furry? Well, my best friend kind of abandoned me, so why don't you talk to that girl you like? Becky? Nah, she said she wasn't coming. Well, she must have been lying, because I saw her a little while ago. That means you should definitely ignore her hints that she doesn't want to be associated with you and go flirt with her. Really? Where? Near that big oak tree. Thank you for the very specific instructions. I'll be sure to go find the large oak tree out of all of the equally big oak trees. Hey, Becky, can I talk to... you? It be your own. It really be your own. Later on. Zach, there's a guy in the road. Slow down. No, there isn't. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna side with Zach here. There is no guy on the road. Okay, now there is. You're drunk. Just pull over and let me drive. No, I'm not. Let me drive. Dude, you just hit someone. No, I'm pretty sure they're just kind of resting on the hood of your car. Like, it looks like they're kind of taking a nap. We have to go back. Are you crazy? We'll get in huge trouble. We'll just have to come back tomorrow. God damn. His own friend kissing his girlfriend, hitting him on the side of the road all in one night. Jeez, okay. I, th I think his best friend's about to die, and when that happens, yeah, he's gonna deserve it. I know what you want, Yes. And I can help you. We're just going to have to get to know each other a little better. Not the end. Okay, yeah, I remember there was gonna be a part two to this, and I think it had something to do with, like, it, it was basically gonna be Jake killing his best friend, which I, I think would have definitely been deserved and a good ending, but, like, I kind of gave up on this, so didn't happen, unfortunately. But, you know, can't have everything. But yeah, that was not scary. I did not get frightened by this one. Honestly, I think the most frightening one of the night was Pencil, which is surprising because it's marked as an easy scare. So, like, it's weird. But yeah, uh, overall, uh, 3 out of 10. So, uh, yeah, that was kind of rough, huh? I can't say it was that surprising to me that my stories weren't all I thought they were, but man, that was disappointing. Now, I'm not usually one to get scared by horror stories, and these stories were not an exception. I am pretty susceptible to jump scares, so that pop-up image effect I threw in a couple of them did make me jump a bit, but the actual stories themselves didn't do a lot for me. However, I will say that a good horror story for me is equal parts scary and sad. You get the scares from the monster's scary actions, but you also get the emotions of the monster's backstory and come to really understand why it does what it does. I could definitely sense the attempts at emotion in each of these stories, from the dead dad in pencil to the insecurity that David's friends might not actually care about him and he didn't listen, to the dead girlfriend trauma in Ginny, to the long-running traumatic bullying in Sarah, to the abandonment in Horseman, to addictions... Yeah, I don't really know what I was doing with that one, I probably should have left it out. For the most part, though, not to toot my own horn, but I could definitely tell that I put effort in to allow these stories to transcend the medium of a cringy Roblox horror story game and be legitimately entertaining. It's just a shame that the execution was so bad. Where it gets interesting, though, is when we consider how it stacks up to other games of the same genre. My game may be pretty bad, but it is by far not the worst of its kind out there. Let me introduce you to the old version of Bam Rules' A Scary Story 1, one of, if not the most popular classic horror story games out there. It's been updated and reworked many times since its creation in 2011, but Bam Rules included an archive of its very first incarnation, and... Ooh boy. Each of these stories is roughly four to five scenes long. The English is god awful. <laughs> so the scene decor is nothing but a gray void. The only music is a weird random ticking noise. And the stories are all basically the same. Person is going about their day, creepy thing shows up, creepy thing kills the person. Person is going about their day, creepy thing shows up, creepy thing kills the person. Person is going about their day, creepy thing shows up, creepy thing kills the person. It gets old fast. And something I didn't realize before playing a bunch of these games for this video is that the majority of these games follow that exact formula. I actually count myself pretty lucky to have been a fan of Joshi's Scary Story game because I realize now that that game, despite how bad it is, is actually very original and good compared to its counterparts. Its stories don't end in a killing every time. Sometimes there's a kidnapping. Sometimes it connects back to the weirdly deep-rooted lore that the game has. Sometimes the ending is left ambiguous and we're not sure what happens. You can call this game a lot 
lot of things, but you can't call it formulaic. The same cannot be said for literally every other game in this genre. There are simply no words in the English language strong enough to describe to you how mind-numbingly boring it is to be going through several of these games for hours and hours on end in order to make a video about them, and have the story that you're on end with someone's bloody corpse on the floor or the wall for the bazillionth time in a row. Again, all of these stories are the same. We introduce the main character going about their day, when all of a sudden, a creepy character shows up and murders them. That's literally it. And even the killers aren't original either. If you're writing a story, you have the power to create any character you want, and yet all of these games mostly used overdone classic characters, like unspecified knife murderer, creepy shadow demon guy, literally any creepypasta character you can think of, Bloody Mary. Okay, I have to take a second to talk about Bloody Mary a little bit more because she had a story in No Lie literally every classic horror game I could find. I'm being dead serious. I did not find a single one of these godforsaken games that didn't include a Bloody Mary story. I have no earthly idea what about her made all of these devs feel like they needed to include her, but she just would not stop showing up. Everywhere I turned, it was just Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. God damn it. So not to toot my own horn again, but I feel like my stories were actually decently original. I definitely remember now certain other horror stories I read elsewhere that were pretty big inspirations for these ones, but I don't think they show that too much. Also, my lobby may be rammed full of free models, but at least it's not barren and undecorated like a lot of these other games are. For a cringy Roblox horror game, I actually think this could have been a hit, if I knew what I was doing at least. In terms of how it stacks up to other horror games overall, well, which one would you rather play? So let's finally answer the question. Why were these games so popular? Cause like, believe it or not, all of the games I've shown you in this video except my own one were pretty big hits. This one, whose lobby is literally just a dark box, has pulled over 6.3 million visits. Joshi's Scary Stories game has garnered over 7.7 .7 million visits. Vision Psyche 7 has made several of these and accumulated over 22 million visits from them. And Bam Rules has accumulated a total of 26 million visits from a Scary Story 1 and 2. Even absolute lowest tier, bare bones garbage games of this genre from around 2018 still have tens to hundreds of thousands of plays. Remember that barren grass field with the free modeled abandoned buildings on it? 204.6k visits. Yeah. Even this game, which isn't even a Scary Stories game, it's just a scary girl NPC standing in the middle of a grass field called Scary Stories, raked in a cool 80k plays. If you so much as mentioned Scary Stories in your game's title back in 2018, you were basically guaranteed attention. People were eating these games up. So why were these games so popular? Well, I think the simple answer to that is that we just didn't have anything better yet. See, kids love creepypastas. Ever since characters like Jeff the Killer and Smile Dog entered the mainstream, millions of children across the world have grown up with a phase in their lives that they're probably trying to repress right now of idolizing creepy killer characters. Millions of children across the world also play Roblox, so I think the first of these games gained popularity simply because they combined two of the average child's favorite interests, a fun block-based online community and repulsive, ungodly, murderous demons. What could be better? As the genre grew, more and more developers saw its growth and started to think of ways in which it could be improved. Dialogue was upgraded, character animations were added, the stories became more and more complex, more interactive elements and gameplay were introduced, and pretty soon, we started getting games like Hotel Stories. Field Trip Z, Break In, and of course, Piggy. <laughs> As much as we older Robloxians love to clown on it, I feel like Piggy is pretty much the ultimate Roblox horror story game. I personally haven't played it for anything other than RB Battles, but I've heard enough other people talk about it to know that that game is obscenely lore intensive. Hours upon hours of content exists on YouTube of theorists dissecting all the fine aspects of it. There's a ton of different characters, many entirely separate storylines, and of course, gameplay to last you for days, from both Minitune himself and fan-made roleplays. But I don't think this game ever would have existed without those initial cringy Roblox horror horror story games all the way back in 2018. They provided the initial boost needed to let Roblox developers know that these kinds of games were something that the public wanted, and as the capabilities of the average Roblox developer improved, so too did the marketability of these newer games. Unfortunately though, this evolution meant that cringy Roblox horror story games that couldn't keep up would be left in the dust. By the time Bam Rules released A Scary Story 2, which included modern professional looking animation and actual gameplay, it was too little too late. The game only ended up amassing 3 million plays as opposed to the original's 20 23 million. And he, along with his contemporaries, was eventually forgotten. In 
summary, even though cringy Roblox horror stories were in fact cringy, that wasn't necessarily a problem at the time. Kids loved the spirit of these games, they didn't care how poorly built they were. To them, it wasn't how well the story was told, it was that the story was there at all. They aren't a great part of our past, but whether we like it or not, they are a part of it. So, next time you're in a spooky mood, why not try playing a few of them? If nothing else, you'll at least be able to laugh at how absurd they are, but who knows, maybe there's still a creepy pasta loving part of you deep inside that can still appreciate a good old fashioned, cringy Roblox horror story. Before I let you guys go, I just have a couple of quick updates on the updates I talked about in my last video. Firstly, those of you who are returning viewers have probably noticed that I've got a new username now. I now go by Nitro Lord. Well, technically Nitro Eord, thanks a lot, random 2010 user, which was inspired by a lot of you guys commenting on the last video ideas that pretty much involved keeping the username almost the exact same, but changing the nitrous part to Nitro. That made me realize that you guys like this username, which I really appreciate, so I've decided not to change it too much. Also, I finally got a Discord. The link should be on the screen right now, as well as the names of those of you I've selected to be moderators. Congrats to you guys, thanks so much for 500 subs, it really does mean a lot to me, and make sure to join the server, because it won't be fun if no one joins. And that's pretty much it. I've been Nitro Lord, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!